afternoon and welcome to The Kitchen Life. The Kitchen Life is all about fewer ingredients, simple recipes, surefire techniques, and passionate cooking. I'm Chef Jonathan Collins and I've got a couple really great recipes for you today. I'm focused on some beautiful Ontario greenhouse vegetables and you can see them here. Have a look at their vibrant color. I've got bell peppers in colors of orange and yellow and red, beautiful, cucumbers and look at those tomatoes. Now when I was thinking about recipes that would best feature these beautiful healthy ingredients I was thinking about something very savory so chicken cacciatore which makes great use of both the peppers and the tomatoes and then for me cucumbers I always get a hankering for some pickled cucumbers. So I'm going to pickle the cucumbers and the beautiful peppers. I'm going to teach you how to can and we're going to do it all right here on The Kitchen Life. So let's start first of all with a pickling uh, brine or the liquid that you use to pickle and we'll just quickly assemble it. One of the things I want you to take away from today is how simple it is. A few simple steps and you'll get it right every single time. First thing I have is 750 milliliters of white vinegar. You can use cider vinegar, you can use a variety of different, the white is beautiful. Remember, however you change the vinegars, that's gonna change the flavor profile. What I really wanna get here is those beautiful cucumbers. I wanna get that cucumber flavor. And then I've got water, so water in. And this is just still water. And then spices, and that's really the key. So there's a few that are the usual suspects, and then there is a few that I love to add myself. So I've got dill seed, so I'm gonna put two teaspoons of dill seed in. Now remember, you don't have to fish these out afterwards. I love just leaving them right in the canning jar. It looks so awesome, and it's intense flavor. Then I've got mustard seed, so I'm gonna do a couple teaspoons of mustard seed. And then coriander. Now coriander is just beautiful when you're doing pickles. So I'm gonna put two heaping tablespoons in. Now I'm gonna put all of this in, but the way that I bring these flavors together is by heating them up. When I do heat them up, what happens is it activates everything that's great about these. And then I've got one of my favorites and maybe one that you don't use very often, but it's star anise. Now star anise has this very subtle licorice flavor and I don't know what happened but I was testing a recipe about six months ago and I just, I just kind of, I, I literally I had a cucumber, a couple cucumbers in my hand or I think we had just sliced some and I had the star anise and I just smelled the two together and I'm like those go perfectly together. So I'm going to take four of the whole star anise, those are going in. Now. With all of this combined, uh, the only thing that I need to add is just a little bit of sugar. You don't need very much, but the sugar balances out the flavor. So I'm going to put a couple tablespoons in, and then this is going to go over to the stove. I'm just going to bring it up to a boil and then simmer. The nice thing is we can do a few of these recipes together, and, uh, and I get a chance to show you all kinds of really great uses. Now, the very next thing I'm, I'm gonna do is start on the chicken cacciatore. And I'm gonna start with one of the really important steps, which is getting a really nice coloring or saute on the chicken. Now you can see what I've done is I've taken, I've broken down, broken down a whole chicken. Now a whole chicken, generally speaking, is less expensive. It's very easy to break down. And if I have time later in this segment, I'll show you how to do that. But what I wanna start with here is literally just a little bit of flour. So all purpose flour, and you don't need very much, what happens is it does brown, but one of the kind of secrets of doing this is you're, you're creating a bit of a roux in the bottom of the pan. And what happens is all of that flour will help to thicken the beautiful sauce. Now, I've got a heavy uh, bottom cast iron pan that's preheating over here. I have it nicely preheated. And I'll just bring this over so that I can show you each and every step. The one thing that's so important about preheating your pan is that you get that, that nice coloring. Woo, it's hot. There we go. So there's a couple things we're gonna do. We're gonna start off by putting a fair amount of butter in. So I'm gonna put that butter in. You can see how hot that pan is. And then I'm gonna add a little camelina oil. And that camelina oil will allow that smoke point to come up. 
allow me to work with that comfortably. I'm just gonna take it. Now I'm just gonna roll that around in that pan. I wanna make sure I have a really nice coating of fat all the way through. And then I'm gonna season the chicken. So a little bit of pepper and a little bit of fresh, always fresh ground pepper if you can. It's gonna be that much more uh, pungent, that much more fragrant. It's gonna be very intense and salt. And then literally, you know what? When you're at home, why not just take and use the tongs? That's hot fat in there, and I'm gonna roll that in. Look at that, beautiful chicken. Notice I'm doing the presentation side or the finish side, in this case, the skin side down. And I'm just gonna arrange this in the pan, and you'll notice that I make sure I arrange it so that none of it is really touching. The reason I do that is I don't wanna crowd the pan. I wanna make sure that everything has the ability to saute without kind of boiling. So one of the things that happens when you saute, saute means to, to jump literally out of the pan. And one of the things that you expect is you're gonna get rid of some of the liquid. Now, let's say I had put two full chickens into this dish. What would happen is rather than getting really nice coloring, some of the moisture tries to escape, but there's not quite enough heat. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna season the second side as well with salt and fresh ground black pepper. And that's already, we're already well into both of these recipes and both are extremely simple to do. Um, and that's really important to me. I know that it's, if it's simple to do and it tastes great, I know that you'll be inclined to do it again and again. Now. Let's look at some of the fun stuff we've got going here. So while that's sauteing, you keep, you remind me to check on it, okay? Uh, while this is sauteing, I'm gonna work a little bit on the, both the uh, pickled cucumbers and the beautiful, look at these. I have these absolutely gorgeous bell peppers. So bell peppers are both sweet uh, and incredibly good for you. They're packed with vitamin C. Uh, there's a lot of nutrition. I'm just gonna check this. So the heat, the temperature on this uh, chicken right now, I'm gonna go kind of medium high. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna show you how fast you can prep a lot of peppers for my pickled peppers. Uh, I'm not gonna dare do the tongue twister about pickled peppers, but you know which one I'm talking about. Okay, so pickled peppers are perfect for sandwiches. They're awesome for hamburgers, for hot dogs. And let's face it, with decent weather finally just around the corner, now is the time to start thinking about compliments to your barbecue. And for me, pickled peppers, they go with just about everything. Now, you're gonna see that the pickled peppers are, are great, but also in this chicken cagetori, what you'll see is that we've got beautiful flavor developed by sauteing the peppers along with that chicken. So I'm just doing a little bit of prep. Do you see how easy it is to just take those sides right off and then for pickled peppers, you don't want big pieces. You want nice, modest sized pieces that will hug your sandwich nicely. Yes, Cindy, you have a question? Yes, Anne wants to know which pepper is the sweetest out of all the colors. Well, I don't know which pepper do you think is sweetest. I think the red is the sweetest. Red for me is, uh, is the sweetest pepper, but each one brings its own flavor complement, and I find them to be very, very uh, refreshing in terms of what they look like. So texture is important, but for us also, what does it look like? So you have all these incredibly bright flavors, and what they look like is just as important to how they taste and their beautiful nutrition. One of the things about these uh, greenhouse grown peppers, which I don't know about you, but I'm pretty amazed by the fact that these can be uh, grown in the greenhouse. For me, having this available to us here in Ontario and having it just within a day's delivery time means I get really fresh produce and we can get it in the dead of winter at a time when you wouldn't be thinking about just about anything fresh. These peppers, these are absolutely beautiful. Now, this dish, I'm just gonna check on my chicken. This dish I am calling kaleidoscope peppers. And that's, oh yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna turn these over. I got a little bit of nice coloration there now. I'm gonna start turning these. 
And I'll show you this color in just a moment. And what's happening right now in the bottom of the pan is I am developing flavor. Now a nice rich chicken cacciatore, you need to make sure to develop that flavor at every stage. And nice browning on the chicken is gonna make all the difference. You notice how fast I'm doing this? Now, peppers are great stored, uh, both peppers and cucumbers. If you store them in the crisper of your fridge, you are going to have them nice and fresh all the time, uh, ready for your access, and you'll have a good texture. Texture is very important with fresh vegetables. But those tomatoes, we want to store them. If you can get them in a sunny window, that would be just perfect. I love storing the tomatoes at room temperature, uh, and uh, they're perfect that way. Yes, Cindy, another question. Dave wants to know, when should you wash your produce? Like, you cook Great them? question, Dave. So produce should be washed just before use. It's really important because produce contains all kinds of natural protectants that uh, will, will keep it uh, fresher for longer. So wash just before you go to use it. Great question, Dave, thank you. So I don't know about you, but this is looking pretty attractive. Now, with our, uh, with our nice, now you'll notice over here, now this is one of the things we wanna talk about today. I have a very, very large stock pot going, and on that stock pot, Woo. In that stock pot, I've got it filled with uh, hot water. Now I've sterilized the tongs, everything's been sterilized, and it was in a, on a rolling boil. So very, very hot for an extended period. Now these, look at this. I'm just gonna add these, this, this is awesome. And the only thing I have to warn you about is as you begin to share these with friends and family, you're going to have to make a lot more because as soon as they taste what pickled peppers are like, as soon as they have them on, on chicken or fish or anything that you're making, this is going to be a huge hit. Now, not only does this look gorgeous in the kitchen, but this is the perfect gift. You know, I was at a wedding not that long ago where the bride and groom took the time to make these for all of the guests. And I'm telling you, I don't think I've ever seen a better reception. I mean, you can give away a lot of things, but giving away food that you've worked hard to prepare, for me, this is just perfect. So this, I'm just gonna take and set this aside. Now, one of the things about canning is that you don't want to handle anything around the lid. We're gonna, we're gonna put this back in, but sterilize for 10 minutes in a rolling boil the lids, the screw caps, and the, uh, the glass uh, jars, and then handle it with a sterilized uh, set of tongs. So I'm gonna set that down, and I'm gonna show you, this is coming along nicely. So one of the surefire ways to know that the chicken is coming along nicely is what does it smell like? So I'm starting to smell this beautiful chicken. I can tell that, well, it's getting a little bit fragrant. We're developing some nice flavors there. And I'm just gonna turn that down for a second because we've got some work to do here. Now, spiralizing for me with cucumbers is just the ticket. Now, you can do a lot of different things and we're gonna show you a few things right now. But for me, spiralizing is just awesome. And I'll show you how simple it is. This is a very inexpensive spiralizer, uh, maybe 15 or $20. Uh, but what you can do is, first of all, no need to peel, ton of nutrition in those skins. And what I'm gonna do is just take nice pieces here, just trimming the ends. And this is a lot of fun. Kids love doing this, and I gotta be honest with you, I love it too. Now, why am I spiralizing pickles? Well, when I'm doing a sandwich, whether it's a burger or maybe a Cubano or something, that I just love pickles on. When you put sliced pickles on, sometimes they have a tendency to slide off. Now, I wanna direct your attention to these. When you spiralize cucumbers, they hang on because they're a little thinner, they're more fine, and let's just show them this. This, I just love. So press firmly and just spin. This is the easiest thing to do. 
And I'm telling you, it's a lot of fun. So let's have a look at that. Oh yeah, look at that. That's just perfect. And then what I do with that, so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna get another jar here. So sterilized jar, sterilized utensils. Now these recipes, these recipes are gonna be available at producemadesimple.ca. And Produce Made Simple, they've got, they've got so many of my recipes and so many other great chef's recipes that allow you to make the kitchen work very simple. So the spiralized now goes in. Now just before it does, I've got some beautiful, are you looking at this? This gorgeous, fresh, you could take and chop that up. But for me, I want anybody that I give this to or anybody that has this, I want them to see that I made this. This doesn't look like you bought it at the store. As soon as I put that dill in, immediately, I can smell that heat activating that beautiful dill. And look at these, I'm gonna put these ribbons in. Oh man, I love doing this. And look at this, put this in. And you really wanna pack this tight because as soon as I put that hot liquid in, you're gonna be surprised at how many uh, cucumbers you can get in here. Now, in this pile that you saw me start off with right here, I had two full cucumbers. What I do every now and then is I separate them just a little bit, and that'll give me lots of space. I can take and press that down. See how you can press those down? And you really wanna press them down, otherwise your pickling juice is going to, uh, you know, you're gonna use a lot more than, than you need to. Now, cucumbers are 90% water. So keep that in mind as you do this. Uh, whether you're eating them fresh or you're doing a beautiful pickling like we're doing here today. Cucumbers are a great source of, nu of nutrition, great source of vitamin C. Um, and you can see, now let's have a look at that. So we've got this beautiful, I, so again, I'm, I'm handling the outside of this, but I'm not putting my hands anywhere near that mouth. I'm gonna drop a bay leaf in, this one and a bay leaf here. And then one of the things I really like, and I've got some beautiful fresh oregano, I'm gonna tuck some fresh oregano down inside with those peppers. And we're just gonna let that sit there for just a moment while we start to work on our chicken cacciatore. So chicken cacciatore uh, is also known as a hunter style chicken. This is a classic dish. It's very, uh, very old in its, uh, uh, in its roots, but it's incredible in its flavor profile. So we're gonna get just a little bit of prep done here for the cagatory. So you can see what the spiralizer is like. In just a minute when I get the cagatory on, uh, I'm gonna show you a couple other styles of pickles that you can do that are also very simple. So I've got a regular yellow onion here. I'm taking off the top and the root, and then just slicing it in half or sauteed or caramelized onion. There's really nothing quite like that. You see, I'm just peeling off. These are nice, fresh onions. So I'm just peeling off a couple layers here. And then I'm gonna make a cut that is long and thin. Uh, and this is really, this is known as a chiffonade. And you can see how easy it is. So I'm literally slicing from the top of the root or from the top of the onion down to the root, but I've removed that full top and I've removed that uh, full root. Now, back to the chicken, I'm gonna take a dish and I am going to, to take out the chicken just for a moment. I'm just gonna set that aside. And I wanna show you how I've developed flavor here. I think you're gonna love this dish. This is a dish the nice thing is you can use a, a pan like I've got here. You can use a slow cooker. You can do this if you do it in steps. You can do this at home for large groups of people. And the nice thing is it gives you a little bit of flexibility because you're using a variety of different cuts. Some people go crazy for the dark meat. Others, white meat is a must. But the best part is nothing goes to waste. And the reason why there's so much flavor is because it's bone in. So you can make it with the bone out, but if I can encourage you to use a full chicken and break it down, you're gonna be very, very happy. So now with my temperature back up, now let's have a quick look at this. 
This is starting to simmer, so this is my pickling liquid. And I just want to give this a light stir. I just want to see what's happening here. First of all, oh man, I can already smell that, that beautiful star anise. It smells so good. Uh, and the coriander, that's coming together nicely. So this is going to be an incredible uh, little piece of uh, flavor base. I'm just going to take some of that fresh dill. I'm going to place that fresh dill inside. And this is going to go back on. Now that it's come up to uh, a boil, I'm going to reduce it to a simmer so that it can uh, have time for it to all come together. I don't need a rapid boil. Whenever you're incorporating flavors like that, you just need to simmer it. Now, I've got, I'm gonna put a little bit more butter in. Uh, what I've got in the pan now is I have some of that beautiful chicken fat, it's very flavorful, and the onions are gonna go in. So with the onions in first, it allows me to saute them, develop the flavor, and also it gives me a chance to really pick up some of the flavors that have developed on the bottom. Now when you put a raw vegetable in, like the onions, there's lots of water. And what happens naturally is that it begins to deglaze the pan. It brings up some of those incredible flavors. Um, so uh, I've been working on recipes lately where everything needs to basically fit in a pan. And if it doesn't, I just don't want to do it. The nice thing about this recipe is it will easily fit in a pan. So I'm gonna grab these. I'm gonna grab, again, this beautiful kaleidoscope of peppers. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do something a little different. Rather than just slicing strips, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna slice rings. And the reason that I do this is I just like the presentation. It's just very cool. I love it. So I'm literally just slicing rings. Plus, you know, you at home, you can do this very simply. And then just take a knife and just nick out those little pieces. You're just gonna take out that inside. And you know what? If you get a seed or two in there, I don't want you to worry about that at all. So you just kind of flick it and they come off nicely. And to trim that out, man, the nice thing is about uh, having the, uh, a little bit of uh, design or a little bit of style in your dish. When you, when you saute these and bring these together and serve these beautiful rings, um, they're very easy to slice, so it's not gonna be cumbersome for you, for you or your family or your guests, but one thing that it will be is, boy, will it ever be attractive. It's gonna be very attractive. I always save little trimmings and little bits like that. Uh, there's no need to waste those. Most of the time, I end up just enjoying them as a quick snack. Um, another way you can do it is you can take and slice through the top and take out that core. And I'm just showing you a few techniques. You have to do whatever you're comfortable with. So if you're, if you're not comfortable with the knife, then what I want you to do is you get the majority of the seeds out that way. And then I can still go back to doing that slice, literally just like this. And it just passes through so easily. Make sure you start with a sharp knife ahead of time. Uh, if you're just joining us, we're working on a classic chicken cacciatore, and also we're working on some beautiful pickled peppers and pickled cucumbers. So I'm just checking my onions now. They're starting to color beautifully. They look so nice. Smells great. I can really smell that beautiful sauteed onion uh, fragrance, there's nothing like it. And then of course, uh, one of our uh, viewers had mentioned earlier, which is the sweetest. The one great thing about using peppers is you get that sweetness. And it's sweet when it's raw, but let me tell you, when you cook it, it gets even sweeter. What you're doing is you're removing some of the acidity, some of the slight bitterness, and you're taking and literally just caramelizing all that incredible flavor. So I think that looks pretty great. To me, that's very attractive. I think anybody would love that. And it's a little bit unique. So the next time you're cutting your peppers, uh, that's something that you can do uh, effortlessly. Now, we've got these gorgeous tomatoes. And tomatoes being available uh, like this are, you know, it's important. Um, you can use canned tomatoes in the off season. 
But you know, here in Ontario, fresh tomatoes are really only available from the field for a couple months. Uh, so having these available is just awesome. So what you'll see, first of all, is I just want to remove that stem. An easy way to do it is just to quarter the uh, tomato, and then I can just simply nick out that little bit of a center. If you don't want to waste very much and you don't want to struggle with it, uh, that's something you can do. I just need to sharpen my knife here a little bit. Now, one of the things you'll see here, I've got some uh, wine. So in order to finish the deglazing process, I'm going to deglaze with the white wine. And that's going to bring up any flavor that was left on the bottom. Any white wine will do, uh, but something that is uh, very drinkable and, you know, preferably uh, from Ontario and if not Ontario, from Canada, you can, uh, you'll be able to enjoy it. Now, what you see in the bottom of this right now is essentially a stock. So that beautiful flavor development of both the chicken and the onions has developed a gorgeous stock. Uh, just going to quickly sharpen my knife here. Sharp knife is a safe knife and uh, it's important to do it on a regular basis. Sometimes you can bring it back with just the honing steel and sometimes you need to take it to have it sharpened. So quartered and with the uh, tops out, those stems out, what I'm gonna do is just make a very simple dice. So one more time, sliced in half and you can slice right through that. And then just take, this is the way that I like to do it best because you just, you literally, you waste the least amount of that tomato. And let's face it, once you buy this fresh produce, you wanna use every last little bit of it. So again, quartered and then just take off that little bit um, and it, uh, it comes out quite easily. So you have to make a decision now. Um, you have to decide if you're gonna leave the seeds in or not. For me, because we're sauteing this dish, I wanna leave those seeds in and I want this to be a rustic dish. So you can imagine in its classic form, uh, it would be a bunch of these ingredients that are coming into season all at the same time. So you've got tomatoes, you've got peppers, you've got, uh, and I've got some uh, uh, mushrooms to put in there as well. And all I'm doing right now is a very, very rustic cut because when I serve this, you can imagine how incredible that uh, chicken is gonna be, but served with tomatoes and the beautiful fresh herbs, there's nothing quite like it. So I'm literally just gonna make a large dice. So I've taken and, and sliced the tomato by eight and now I'm just going to slice these in half. The thing that I want you to be able to do is to do this and do it quickly. So you can throw a meal like this together. The nice thing is you can even do it the day ahead, um, cook it, leave it in the same pan, and then just reheat it in that pan. There's no need to, uh, to make it the day of. As you know, most dishes that we make they get better with time, and, uh, and I think you'll find this one is certainly, uh, that's certainly the case. So I'm going to turn the heat up here. I want to make sure I reduce all of that wine down to almost the point where it's dry. And that way I'll get the right kind of, I'll get all the flavor I want from the wine, but with no, none of the alcohol, and, uh, and it'll be, just be beautifully and perfectly sweet. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and we're basically just going to start to reassemble all of this. I've got peppers that are, uh, uh, mushrooms that need to go in. The tomatoes are going to go in and I'm going to bring this over here so you can see uh, what I'm going to do with the chicken. Tomatoes are going to go in. Um, you don't have to cover this up but you'll get, uh, if you can cover it up for a time, you will actually get really good results. It's something that, uh, that you can make quite easily. And I'm gonna show you this right now. We'll do this, bring it right here so you have a good look at it. I'm gonna get that chicken back in there. Beautiful chicken and this, these peppers. And all I'm gonna do is just begin to nestle. Now remember, we had all of, we had, uh, flour on the chicken. So you can see that liquid. What's going to happen is that beautiful stock is going to start to thicken up. So I'm just arranging the chicken. You can imagine now, you can see the juice that was uh, rendered there just by resting. I want to make sure to put that in. We're going to put that juice in. And now we're going to finish assembling this. So 
I'm gonna take those gorgeous peppers. So I told you about the peppers. These are beautiful. The peppers are going in. And what's nice is these are going to uh, soften. Uh, they're going to look beautiful. They're going to taste beautiful. And now I'm going to put a couple bay leaves in. I'm going to tuck these down inside. And here's one of the keys. I'm going to pour some chicken stock. And when we're done this dish, this will be, all of this liquid will have reduced and given us a beautiful, uh, a beautiful kind of a gravy. I'm literally just taking this whole oregano and I'm taking some and stripping it off, putting that on top. We've got a beautiful spice base with the salt and with the pepper, but we want to add a fragrant base using the fresh herbs. And I'm going to tuck a little bit of fresh rosemary in. Now remember, you can chop this up and put it on top and I'll probably do some of that to finish. But what I really like here is just the simple fact that we get all these flavors together. Now, I'm going to take and I'm going to slice the top off a head of garlic, just like that. And I'm going to tuck this right inside there as well. So we have a lot of intense flavors going on here. Um, one of the last things I need to do is to season this. So a little bit of salt and a little bit of black pepper. And now this is ready to go back to the stove. I'm going to bring that up to medium temperature and that will begin to reduce. That's looking good. And now we can move to that beautiful pickling liquid that is uh, ready to be uh, finished. Now remember what we did with both of these jars. I haven't touched anywhere near the lid. The inside is sterilized. We put all the contents in. Um, I'm just going to put a few cloves of garlic in, uh, in both of them. And I'll just put them in whole. Uh, there's no need to, you know, uh, you've seen whole garlic in canned goods many times before. And so I'm literally going to put one in there. I put at least one in each. And, uh, and we'll make sure to get that flavor base. Yes, do we have a question? Sarah asks, uh, I'm just joining, how long did you go about sterilizing the jars again? Great question, Sarah, and I really want to be clear about this. Um, I used a large stock pot. I filled it about 80%, more than three quarters full, and I brought it to a rolling boil. I took my jars, and generally speaking, using new lids and new caps. You can use old jars, but always replace the lids. I put it in and I, in a rolling boil, I kept it boiling for 10 minutes. Then I made this beautiful fragrant brine. So my pickling liquid, which by the way, is absolutely beautifully fragrant. And in it, I put, I had dill seed, mustard seed, coriander seed, and star anise, and then the beautiful white vinegar with some white sugar, and this is ready to go in. And now you're caught up, and now here are the final steps. So I've, I've got this beautiful liquid, and what I'm gonna do is I'll start off with the, I got a little bit of a pour here, guys. So let's, and I don't wanna, let me see how we're gonna, I'm gonna take, you know what I'm gonna do? Hold with me, just stay on that for a second. I got that, uh, that pan filled right up so high. I'm gonna take, and I'm just gonna, got a stainless steel ladle. I'll just quickly, uh, it was sterilized earlier, but I'll just take another quick pass at it there. And what I'm gonna do is just literally begin to ladle this in. This uh, dill that I put in there can be removed. You can see you've got all those beautiful seeds. I'm gonna leave that star anise in there as well. How's that look, guys? That look good? That look appetizing? You wanna make sure to get the seeds in because keep in mind, it's gonna finish its cooking. Now you see that was only three ladles in. So three ladles in and I've already got that filled. Now, one of the things I, I cautioned you about earlier is make sure that your jar has enough product in it because otherwise you're going to go through a ton of this pickling liquid, which is fine, it's, it's inexpensive to make, but you want it to go a long ways if you can. So the pickled peppers, these beautiful kaleidoscope pickled peppers, 
You don't want to say that too many times too fast. And what you'll see is I'm filling up with the pickling liquid right up to, but not past the neck. I'm just going to give these a little shake, just a little shake. Those both look good. That's the pickling liquid in. And now let's take it for the final step. So inside my, and I and notice I've kept this boiling the whole time. So what I've got is I've got a couple lids. I'll just set those there. And I know that there's a lot of confusion about how to successfully accomplish this. So what I wanted to do today is just kind of share with you how I accomplished this. You'll notice that I'm, I'm not touching those lids. I'm using the tongs to handle it. That's your lid. Now that's been in the liquid, uh, in the water, and it has boiled. Second one here. And one of the mistakes I originally made is when I started doing this, I thought you had to super tighten these on. Once you get it on, you can just snugly close it, just like this, and that's all you want. Again, just a nice snug close. Because technically, as it cans, this will actually be the thing that seals, not the pressure of the lid. So now I'm gonna take these and very carefully, I'm gonna support this going over, this is one liter, so it's very uh, heavy. And I'm gonna put those back into my liquid. Keep in mind, I'm gonna turn that temperature back up. I'm going to set a timer for these. Keep in mind that you have to put these in a rolling boil for at least 10 minutes. Now, some people do it with, uh, they do it in the stove. Um, for me, uh, the submerged in water is the safest and it's really the easiest. You're guaranteed a few things. First of all, the pickles and the peppers, they'll be fully cooked. Um, that liquid is gonna come up to temperature. And when you're finished that, remove it, put it on a cooling rack. And the final test to make sure that it's done is you wanna make sure that that lid, let's show them this one. So that lid just made that pop sound. It needs to be concave. If it's still up, then you, haven't, you don't have a good seal. There's air in there, it has not contracted. And the reason you leave the neck open is you want that, that uh, air that's left in there, you want it to contract. And you wanna make sure to get a very, very good seal. So my chicken cacciatore is cooking away nicely now. Uh, it is reducing, you can see the steam coming off it. That tells me that I have, uh, that I am getting a reduction that I'm taking and I'm concentrating flavors. Um, chicken cacciatore is a beautiful way to really enjoy fresh vegetables. And these Ontario greenhouse grown uh, vegetables are exceptional. Uh, I'm just gonna take a moment and throw to you, so I want you to see, have a look at the Produce Made Simple website. This Produce Made Simple website, the best part about it is its search engine. You can find the ingredients that you want and then you can find the recipes that you need. It's everything that you'll ever need. And by the way, take a moment, go over to their social channels, find them, the posts on recipes and the pictures. It'll get you inspired to cook, uh, whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, or desserts. And I've done some of them all. Anyway, have a look at this website and we'll take uh, just a quick break as we look. Okay, as you can see, uh, that is a great resource. And listen, as a professional chef, I don't wanna miss this opportunity to talk about buying local. So sometimes buying local means from your local market in uh, August and September. But in this case, buying local means supporting greenhouse growers. They employ thousands of people, many, many families, and over 200 growing operations. These are the people working day in and day out to bring you product that 
is produced with some of the most technologically advanced systems that I've ever seen. It's fresh, it's close, and the consistency and the quality of this product is like nothing I've ever seen. So I wanna show you one other way to do some pickles. I love these because for me, these are both good for uh, drinks. So if you're doing something like a, a spice pickle uh, for maybe a, a Caesar, these are great. And so one, one time, you know, one of the things we, we leave the skin on sometimes and other times we can kind of make a very cool a mottled look by just taking every other slice and leaving some of the skin. Leaving some of the skin means I'm leaving some of the flavor and I'm leaving some of the texture. But at the same time, I want to do something that's a little bit fun. Now I'm going to take these and I'm going to look at it. And that's going to be, I want, I want a very big wedge here. So I'm going to take, I'm going to slice the end off. And then I'm going to take and slice it like this. So I've got these really these giant pickles and I'll tell you the cucumbers are priced so that you can really do this kind these kinds of projects and have a lot of fun with it. So I'm going to slice that in half first and then I'm going to take and slice it in half again. And what you end up with is this giant pickle. It's very so this can go on the side of a plate. This is something that can be put in a drink. But what the best part is is that it's going to soak up all of that incredible pickle flavor. So I'm going to do another one because I really want to finish these for you. I think you're going to love these and make sure that these will fit in these jars. Um, it's, uh, it's something that uh, gives you a little bit of a wow factor if you're making drinks and if you're serving this with a sandwich, what it means is that you've got something very special to share with your guests. So remember when you do begin the canning process, make sure to set a timer I want you to be sure each and every time that you've got at least 10 minutes. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to start again with these, this beautiful fresh dill. There's nothing like fresh dill. I'm going to just tuck that in there. Fresh dill in. Make sure you can tuck it in there. Love that. Then the pickles are going in. Oh, the perfect size. Love that. These are going to be monster pickles. Uh, I'm just going to trim the ends and we'll make sure we have them approximately the same size. Of course, with the trimmings, the nice thing about this is I could do some spiralized. I could do some rings. As a matter of fact, I'll show you that in a minute. And then in this case, we're just doing these quarters. If you think the quarters are maybe a little bit uh, big, then you can do, uh, do them in sixth or eighths. So let's tuck these in. I love this. This is a beautiful way to use fresh produce and it's a creative way. I think you're going to love it. I think you'll use it and do it time and again. I don't know how that one got a little longer. Take that off. Make sure it's trimmed. It's got to be trimmed. It, it's got to be below that. So we're not going to have any liquid there. So let's make sure we get that down. The other thing that you could do is take this beautiful uh, cuke and with those uh, strips left on there, making nice little rings like this this makes a beautiful canning opportunity as well. So let's do just a few more of these because I think this is gorgeous. And I'm just doing this because my cacciatore is cooking away back there. Remember, you could use, uh, you could use turkey breast for this as well. Uh, I'm going to grab another jar. And, you know, your creativity, this is where you really get to, you know, take and make things that you will own, things that belong to you. So I'm going to put more of the, uh, that beautiful dill in there. These are things that, that will become your classics. They'll become your recipes. So I'm going to put these rings in. Of course, these would make beautiful uh, pickles as well. And I'm going to do one more. So we'll peel it again. Peel that. This is so much fun. This is, the, this is a great way to, and this is a great thing to pass on. If you're a grandparent like I am, this is a great thing to pass on to your grandkids. If you're a parent, this is a great way to get your kids into the kitchen. Um, and I'll tell you, tasting will be believing. When they taste this and the difference between something that's been commercially produced and something that you made yourself with fresh ingredients from Ontario, they're going to be pretty impressed. 
it, I can tell you one thing, it'll take your, uh, your sandwiches to a whole new level. So I'm going to drop these in. And again, when you're filling the jars, make sure to fill the jars as tightly as possible without going over top of that neck. This one's going to have a few more seeds. There we go. I'm going to press that down. And then let's put a bit more of this liquid in. Now, I'm going to have to, I got to do something here, guys. These, I'm just going to, I'm just going to take a moment. I don't want to do something incorrect live. So I'm going to take, and I just have to trim about half an inch off these. Really important. I want to make sure to get this right. So just measure it ahead of time. I'm just going to take a bit more off. Drop these in. Beautiful. Love it. Okay, so have a look there at our pickling liquid. And we're just going to fill that up again. You can see using the ladle uh, helps to uh, have an accurate pour. I've got little bits of... Uh, of all of those beautiful fresh herbs in there. And look at this. And then we've got our drink pickles, um, or we'll call them our, or you never know. I remember uh, my oldest son, every time we'd go to one of these county fairs, they have those giant pickles. Kid would devour one, shamelessly. Okay, so this is going in, top this up. Let's hope we have just enough. I'm gonna put some seeds up there. A few seeds here. Okay, so we're a little light here. So I'm just going to fill it up with a little bit of water. We'll just top it up just a little bit. There we go. And top this up just a little bit. And then let's get those for one last time because we want to be so clear about it. I'm going to grab the lids. I'm going to grab which are uh, sterilized and we are going to do some more canning here. So the lids, they've got a rubber seal. You can see it there. That seal makes the seal on the jar. Whoops. Okay, so when it falls on the floor, make sure to re-sterilize it. And let's show you this one. We'll put this one on here. And remember, that what I want is I want this to be snug, but not super tight. If you put it on too tight, it'll actually prevent it from sealing properly. So I'm gonna take that and support it. It's gonna go in. You can see those beautiful pickles. Those are gonna be a huge hit. Love that, rolling boil. And I'm gonna show you the stage at which our cagetori is at, so you can see how those flavors develop. So inside that cacciatore, you can see it begins to, to really to cook down. What I want you to see is the color of that liquid because for me, that is the key. This is the beautiful thing about cacciatore. Are you looking at that? Look at the color of that beautiful liquid. That is, that is packed with so much nutrition and so much flavor, that is going to be a hit. When you make chicken cacciatore, I guarantee you, you are going to make it again and again and again. Now listen, a classic cacciatore has uh, sauteed mushrooms. So one of the things you can do that I didn't do is you can slice up some mushrooms and put them in at the stage of the onions to develop flavor again. I'm going to put this back on and for this broadcast of The Kitchen Life, I have to say that I am a huge fan of these uh, three ingredients. As a matter of fact, if you think about how often you use tomatoes and cucumbers, whether cucumbers fresh in a salad, pickled, uh, and peppers, whether they're cooked or fresh, of course, all of these make beautiful crudités. Eating them raw gets them in their very best form, uh, full of uh, nutrition, full of vitamin C, 
all kinds of great uh, liquid. There's so much water in these. They're extremely healthy for you. I'm going to tell you very quickly. So um, as a professional chef, uh, there's been many opportunities I've had. Uh, I can tell you uh, that I almost always, for the people I'm working for, I almost always have a crudite, a crudite platter or fresh vegetables cut covered and in the refrigerator for them or their family at any time. It's one of the things that even after you cut it, if you keep it wrapped in plastic, it holds its uh, texture, tastes very good, and man, if you're looking for a quick snack, there's nothing quite like it. So for myself and for my entire family here at our farm in southwestern Ontario, um, the kitchen life is something that uh, if you go back and watch previous broadcasts, I know that you'll enjoy it. Do me a favor, go to my uh, social at Chef Jonathan Collins on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and also The Kitchen Life, and definitely check out Produce Made Simple and the Ontario Greenhouse Growers. You're gonna love it. All the links are gonna be below this broadcast. Click on it, see what they have to say, look at the families, look at the communities that they support, and hey, when you're buying fresh, buy local, and by Ontario, I guarantee you won't be disappointed.